Good day, Ms. Vinice. In this video, we will be presenting our research proposal. So to begin with, our research title is Factors Influencing Sanitation and Hygiene Practices Among the Restaurants in Hilanga Slate. Together with my teammates, Ms. Lipian Marian Antonieta and Ms. Rapas Tiffany Grace. I'm Nicole Naire and I will be the one to present the chapter one of our research proposal, the introduction. And under the introduction, there is background of the study, statement of the problem, significance of the study, research objectives, scope and limitations of the study. And now, I will present to you the background of the study. Improved hygiene and sanitation practices in hospitality industry settings, such as restaurants, hotels, and etc., are effective for the prevention of infections, controlling the transmission of pathogens, and promoting good health. Sanitation is considering as the science and practice of affecting healthful and hygienic conditions, study and use of hygienic measures. Sanitation systems aim to protect human wealth by providing a clean environment that will stop the transmission of disease, especially through the focal oral road, route. Globally, 3.6 billion people lack access to safely managed sanitation services. Almost 8% of the global population practices open defecation. Despite significant gains, 2.4 billion people gained access to improve toilets or latrines between 2000 and 2020, sanitation was one of the most off-track millennium development goals or the MDGs globally. Today, 1.7 billion people still lack even basic services. Among those 580 million shared improved sanitation facilities with other households, counted as limited services and 616 million used and improved facilities. The Republic of Philippines DOT issues protocols on restaurant operations under the new normal last June 10, 2020 due to the crisis that the world is facing today, which is the COVID-19 pandemic. The Department of Tourism has released Memorandum Circular Number 2020004 or the new normal health and safety guidelines for DOT accredited restaurants that will cover the areas of management, configuration, and set up employees, customer service, and other procedure, delivery and sanitation, disinfection, safety measure, and other DOT accredited restaurants must follow new protocols such as requiring diners to fill out health declaration forms or HDF monitoring the body temperature of all the employees and providing their staff with personal food safety apparel and training and annual checkups. Maximum customer capacity should also be reduced to 50% of the restaurant seating or venue capacity. Restaurant owners are encouraged to install an alarm system that will remind employees to practice proper hand washing in every 20 minutes before and after meals, before wearing gloves, touching food or food con contact surfaces, and other specific actions. In the absence of soap and water, 70% solution alcohol or alcohol-based hand sanitizers must be provided. On the other hand, customers must also wear face masks, accomplish HDFs, undergo temperature checks and practice proper hand washing and physical distancing upon entry or when inside the restaurant premises. They will be required to provide their names and contact details in a contract tracing, tracing log sheet. By the establishment, other salient features of the guidelines include standards on in-house and delivery services of restaurants, such as the establishment of pick-up or take-away zones of customers and overall improvements to the establishment's table and setting arrangement. 
customer queuing, order taking, and payment systems. The guidelines were issued after the adoption by the Interagency Task Force on the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases. Of, of the point recommendations of the DOT and the Department of Trade and Industry on health and safety protocols for dining operations of restaurants. According to the Republic of the Philippines, Philippine New Agency by Roel Amazona, last May 5, 2020, Lady Governor asked residents to embrace new normal. That's why Lady Governor Leopoldo Dominico Petilia said, these are some of the measures every resident in Leyte should do as their contribution in the, in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Under the directive, the movements of Leyte residents are not restricted. However, they must comply with all sanitation and health protocols issued by the Department of Health. Business owners must de devise ways for a no-contact system with their customers, and they may also refuse the entry of a person who is not wearing a face mask or manifesting flu-like symptoms. The body temperature of employees must be monitored regularly while the hand washing area must be in place at the entrance and exit of each establishment. With this following information, this research aims to investigate and assess the following factors that influence sanitation and hygiene practices specifically among the restaurants in Hilongos Leyte. Statement of the problem. We have a primary question in in our research study. What are the factors influencing the sanitation and hygiene practices among restaurants in Hilongo State? And we have uh, secondary questions. The first one is, what are the food sanitation and hygiene practices implemented among restaurants in Hilongo State? The second is, why is it important to perform good sanitation and hygiene practices? And the last one is, what are the possible suggestions in improving the sanitation and hygiene practices among the restaurants in Hilongo Slater? Significance of the study. The findings of this study will redound to the benefit the restaurants of the restaurants, especially the restaurant owner, considering that sanitation is one of the most important practices that must be implemented in terms of quality service that covers the health and safety of the customers. Thus, the restaurants that apply the recommended approach that derived from the results of this study will be able to train the working personnel in the restaurant for the better. Employees or staff will be guided on what, what should be emphasized by the restaurant's owner to improve their performance regarding regarding on practicing sanitation. The, for the researchers who conducted this study, it will help them uncover critical areas that many researchers were, a, were not able to explore. Thus, a new theory about the factors influencing sanitation and hygiene practice may be arrived. The objective of this research is that this study aims to understand and uncover which factors influence sanitation and hygiene behavior towards restaurants in Hilongas Leyte. The scope and limitation of this study. This research study compiled with the researchers started last September 13, 2021 until January 26, 2022. The restaurant owners or managers in Yulonga Slate are the respondents of this research study. The scope of this research is to determine the factors influencing sanitation and hygiene practices among the restaurants in Yulonga Slate. Good day, ma'am. This is Tiffany Grace Derapas, and today I will be presenting our 
review of related literature of her research, which entitled Factors Influencing Sanitation and Hygiene Practices Among the Restaurants of Hilongos Lake. So this chapter includes the information, ideas, finished thesis methodology, and conclusion. The review of this literature for the study focuses in identifying the factor that influences the sanitation and hygiene practices of the restaurants, in which those included in this chapter helps in familiarizing information that are relevant and similar to the present study. Related Literature According to Pross Austin et al. 2014, inadequate drinking water, sanitation and hygiene, or wash are important risk factors, particularly in low-income settings. In 2011, an estimated 768 million people relied on an improved water supplies, which are thought to have high levels of pathogen contamination. Many more use sources that are classified as improved but still unsafe for consumption. More than 2.5 billion people lack access to an improved sanitation facility. Inadequate hand hygiene practices have been estimated to affect 80% of the population globally. Estimating the impact of WASH on diarrheal diseases has commonly been assessed with comparative risk assessment methods. Although, other methods such as population intervention models could also be considered. Other diseases control or other diseases cannot currently be estimated with such method due to insufficient evidence and require alternative approaches. As this would require considerable additional assessment and analysis, they are not analyzed in detail in this article. Accrual of substantive recent evidence, as well as trends in the total of diarrheal burden, justifies the revision of methods and estimates of the burden of diarrheal disease associated with inadequate wash. While the estimate presented focuses mainly on low and middle income settings, the approach used can be accommodate a wider range of settings. An overview of previous findings on the impact of wash on other diseases that diarrhea is also provided. According to Pras Austin et al. 2002, the Global Burden of Disease Study or GBD estimated the burden of 107 major diseases and 10 risk factor factors at global and regional levels. Using an internally consistent approach, estimates were reported in summary measure of measures of population health combining mortality and morbidity. In terms of the disability adjusted life year or DALY, this initial approach has prompted a series of replications at the individual country level. Such assessment provided or provide an important input to the rational development and evaluation of policies by the health sector and activities of other sectors that directly manage or influence the determinant of health. Additional information required for the rational development of such policies and activities includes the effectiveness and cost effectiveness of interventions social considerations and the av availability of resources and the type of policy environment. Information on disease burden relating to risk factors rather than diseases is likely more relevant to the policy because it may allow actions to be directly targeted to modify exposure. As a result, of increasing interest in such risk factors, the World Health Organization is currently involved in assessing the disease burden of about 20 risk factors in an internally consistent way. 
Six of these risk factors focus on environmental and occupational health concerns, one of which is water, sanitation, and hygiene. The risk factor water, sanitation, and hygiene as investigated here comprises a number of interrelated transmission pathways composed of competing or complementing events for causing disease. The number of the resulting disease is large. Fecal oral diseases account for an important part of this disease burden and are the main focus of this article. Human and animal ex excreta can affect human health through drinking water, sewage, indirect contact, and food through virus pathways. This first exposure-based assessment or disease of disease at the global level should therefore be considered an initial estimate, which will undergo refinement as additional information becomes available. The research paper presented above mentioned relevant data and information about the factors that influence or that affect sanitation and most of the data presented were not quite far from each other. The researchers always mentioned about the impact of improper sanitation. That's why the goal of this research is to indicate and mention all the factors that affect sanitation, especially in the restaurants, specifically in Hilongas in connection to the hospitality industry. And that's our review of related literature or RRL for our research. Thank you for listening. Chapter 3 Methodology In this chapter, we are going to discuss the different methods that we use in conducting this research. So first, we are going to tackle the research design. This research study used a qualitative research approach which is basically more subjective. This approach to research involves the collections of data from first-hand observation, interviews, questionnaires, focus groups, participant observation, recordings made in natural settings, documents, and artifacts. The data is basically non-numerical, hence it is from poweredly words, narratives, and descriptions, which is based on inductive reasoning. The researchers apply questionnaires as a subject approach on gathering data. For the research area, I have provided here in the presentation the exact figure of the location of our study area, which is in Hilongos. Hilongos is a coastal municipality in the province of Leyte. The municipality has a land area of 192.92 square kilometers or 72.49 square miles, which constitutes 3.05% of Leyte's total area. Its population, as determined by 2020 census, was 64,514. This represented 3.63% of the total population of Leyte province, or 1.42% of the overall population of the Eastern Visayas region. Based on these figures, the population density is computed at 334 inhabitants per square kilometer or 866 inhabitants per square miles. Based on the grid circle distance, the shortest distance between two points over the surface of the earth, the cities closest to Hilongos are Masin, Southern Leyte, Bai Bai Leyte, or Mok Leyte, Danao, Cebu, Lapu Lapu, and Mandawi. The nearest municipalities are Bato Leyte, Hindang Leyte, Matalum Leyte, Inopakan Leyte, Buntok, Southern Leyte, and Sugod. Southern Leyte. Its distance from the national capital is 620.84 kilometers or 385.77 miles. The following list delineates such as distance measures. Now is the research respondents. This research 
paper selected all the restaurants located in Hilongos Leyte. The estimated proponent would be in the minimum of 15 and maximum of 20 restaurants, which is mainly established in Hilongos Leyte. This research only chooses those respondents that establish their own restaurant business since it focuses on the hospitality industry, especially in, rest in the restaurant, which is stated in the title. Next is how the data was collected, which is the data collection and its instruments. The data collections of this research is started after the approval of the research proposal. Standard protocol was followed before the actual gathering of data, including seeking for consent and approval of the respondents. As mentioned, this study will implore the use of two approach, which is the distribution of questionnaires that contains questions that needs a subjective answer and interview to address the research questions. The reason why this research applies two approaches is to collect more data because every respondent wants different approach. Some may verbally confident, while others are more on nonverbal approach. These questionnaires and interview presented is exactly the same, which it, which basically have two parts. The first part consists of profile information of the respondents, which is optional, and for the next part, consists of all the questions in this research. The questions given and asked to the participant needs a descriptive approach. Here are some of the questions. The primary questions of the research is, what are the factors influencing the sanitation and hygiene practices among restaurants in Hilongos Leyte? Secondary questions. What are the food, sanitation, and hygiene practices implemented among restaurants in Hilongos Leyte? Why is it important to perform good sanitation and hygiene practices? And lastly, what are the possible suggestions in improving the sanitation and hygiene practices among restaurants in Hilongos Leyte? All the answers from the respondents were regrouped to determine if there is a similarity and differences. After gathering the answers to that um, submitted by the respondents, it is, we are now going to analyze the data. The data collected was analyzed and presented in accordance with the research of the objectives. Tables were used to present the results of the study. Data results was analyzed by applying a diagram to determine the similarities and differences of the respondents' answers and then applying tables to group the answers. To easily analyze the data gathered in this research study, researchers act in accordance to these following steps. So we are going to follow these steps in order to analyze the data, the data gathered correctly. First is we are going to prepare and organize the data collected. Then second is review and explore the data. Third is create initial codes. Fourth is review those codes and revise or combine into themes. themes. Then last re lastly, present themes in a cohesive manner. Well, um, that's all for this, for the methods used in um, collecting the data from the respondents. Thank you for listening.